Cool. All right. Let's start by answering our do now. So today's do now. Can we get headphones out of ears? Chit chat stopping. Looking up at the board. Double check your work. All right. So do now for today. I gave you guys the formula for calcium carbonate, and I was just asking you to apply vocabulary words just to check to make sure we know cation and not ion and polyatomic ion. If I was to break this up into the charges or into the individual ions, I should say, we would have Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus. So that's how they would break up. Why the 2 plus? 2 plus. Remember when we were talking about the periodic table? And then elements in group 2 have two valence electrons. So they would want to lose two electrons in order to become more stable, go down a shell level. So my calcium atom, it has two valence electrons. It wants to lose those two electrons. And by losing those two electrons, I then become positive too because I've lost my negative charges. We good? All right. And then the carbonate, that's one of your polyatomic ions. So you had that on your little summary page that I gave you yesterday. You also have it on that pink resource sheet. On the back, you'll have a table of ions, and you'll see that um, its charge is uh, 2 minus. Are we good so far? Um, I do want to point out when it comes to the charges, be mindful that these guys up here are written as small numbers at the top because they are superscripts. So superscripts are the top bit, bottom bit is the subscript. And then big numbers in front are your coefficients. So this here is referring to the number of atoms. This up here refers to the charge of that polyatomic, which I gave you the answer to one of the questions. Polyatomic. Do you want me to go over that again and make some nicer notes for that? No, we're good? Okay. All right. Calcium here is positive, so that is going to be my cation. Remember, we thought about the kitty cat and how it is positive. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I just That's the way I like to remember it. Um, and then this negative charge ion is my anion. Anions are negative. Think about think about an onion and how the onion makes you cry, and you associate crying with negative things. Um, last thing we were thinking about is polyatomic. So it means multiple poly, like polymer. I'm trying to think of another way uh, to kind of explain that. So I see I have carbon and three oxygens. So this is also known as a polyatomic ion. What do you think this guy would be called since there's only one atom there? Monoatomic. Mono meaning one. Think monorail from The Simpsons. Monorail. Monorail. That one train that went around <laughs> Springfield. I hope that's still a relevant re reference. Uh, but if we're ever talking about one ion, we call it a mono, um, mono, monoatomic ion. Ion. Mono meaning one. Like monorail, it just has one train. All right, cool. Moving on? Yeah. All right, let me pause that. Actually, we're probably going to dive straight into the notes and then I'll let you guys get some work done. So, uh, what we're going to do for today is finish the second half of our learning intention. That is the uh, combining our ions together to form ionic compounds and understanding how we do that ratio. Um, this information is going to be useful for uh, when you guys start doing equations and things like that because we need to know ratios and things in order to balance our equations. So I'm just setting up some groundwork for next week. Uh, next week we will start looking at the assessment um, and uh, what the Achieve Merit and Excellence criteria are. Uh, and part of that Merit Excellence criteria is doing symbolic equations, so doing formulas and stuff. So let's look at that. All right. So a couple of things on our agenda. What I'm going to start off with for today's lesson is I'm going to show you guys how to do polyatomic ions, sorry, polyatomic compounds. Um, and I have a list of different ionic compounds that I will use as examples so we can kind of work our way through and understand how this process works. Sound good? Yeah. All right. And then after that, 
Um, actually, I won't worry about that just yet. So let me find this on my classroom screen so I can have it on the slide so I can see what files I want to do with you guys. All right. Back to our board notes. <clears throat> let me get a periodic table. Actually, let me get your resource sheet so we can use it at the same time. Just trying to find it. That. Oh, here we go. This half. Okay. Cool. So let's do some examples. I'll do a big variety of them just so you can see different kind of challenges you might face when looking at your um, ionic compounds and teaching you guys how to kind of figure out that information. The first example that I have for you guys is going to be sodium sulfide. Now, one of the challenging things on this assessment is that we won't be giving you the translations between the name of the ions or the name of the atoms and their elements. So, for example, when I'm looking at this periodic table, you'll notice, I'll just move that down so you guys can see that. Uh, you'll notice that all we have is a symbol. We don't have words next to it. So we do need to be able to identify basically up to 20, and then a few here and there I'll point out as well. The other thing is when we give you this table of ions, yes, we give it to you, and we give you the charge of them, but we don't give you the names of them. So keep in mind that you're going to need to be able to uh, pull that information as well. You'll need to also know the names of these polyatomic ions as well. So, first thing is first, do you guys want me to label the polyatomics so we know yeah. how to call them? Okay. So, when we are looking at our sheet over here, coming to name them, the monoatomic ions are really easy. They're just the name of the element. So, Na, that's sodium. Uh, K, potassium. Ag, silver. So, those are things we don't have to... Um, do a whole big work when it comes to the translation. The monoatomic anions are a little bit different. There's a small change in the wording, uh, so we have to watch out for that. So, for example, oxygen goes from being called oxygen, the atom, to oxide, the ion. Sulfur, sulfide. Uh, chlorine, the D cha uh, the N changes to a D chloride. Uh, iodide. Fluoride. Do you guys need me to write those down? Or are you guys okay? It makes sense. Those ones kind of just change what you'd expect them to do. Um, for the polyatomics, the this one here, the nitrogen with the four uh, hydrogens, that is ammonium. Uh, this OH, that one's hydroxide. So like oxide, but we're adding a little hydrogen to it. It's a hydroxide. This one here, uh, CO3, is my, oh, I might zoom out a little bit so you guys can see more of it, is carbonate. SO4 is sulfate. So we got to be careful with our wording. Sulfate is different from sulfide. The eights are the ones with the uh, polyatomics, the oxygens. This one here is nitrate. So they're all following a similar trend. And then this last one here we call hydrogen carbonate. Because it's added hydrogen to it. There's also another name for that, and that is bicarbonate. Have you guys heard of bicarbonate? Where have you heard it from? Science. Science? 
baking. So you ever hear of baking soda? Awesome. Baking soda is uh, sodium bicarbonate. Mm -hmm. So you're using that same chemical. Oh. Um, so so hydrogen, no, hydrogen uh, carbonate and carbonate are two different things. The difference here is that hydrogen carbonate has an extra hydrogen to it, whereas the carbonate doesn't have it. Yeah? Cool. Questions, concerns, comments, are we okay? Yep. Keep going. Uh, for this one, chloride. Yeah. Uh, chlorine to chloride. Oh, that is fluoride. Yeah, yeah. So it just takes the name of the element. You just change one of the letters. All right, now that we know that information, we can work with sodium sulfide. So sodium is my Na+. And my sulfide is the S2 minus. Now, something to remember with uh, ionic compounds is that the ionic compound, the charges need to add to zero. So, if my sulfide is a negative 2 and I'm adding a positive 1, what's my net charge right now? My net charge. If I have negative 2 plus positive 1. Negative 1. So, I need a second sodium atom, sorry, a second sodium ion, so that way now I have a positive 2 charge with a negative 2 charge and it adds to 0. So when I go to write the formula for this, it would be Na2, indicating two sodium ions, S. Just going to try to focus that a bit better. Are you okay with that? Another example? Give you guys a few examples, just so you can see how it works in different ways. All right, the next example is copper. Chloride. So if I look at my table of ions, I see coppers over here with that 2 plus. And then I see chloride with the negative 1. So is this currently going to balance to 0? No. So I need to add what? One chloride. One more chloride. So now it adds up to zero, so I would have CuCl2. All right, uh, calcium oxide. So what's the charge of calcium? Calcium, what's that? One plus or two plus? One. Two. two. Remember, group two. And then what about the charge of oxide? Negative two. So are these guys balanced? Yeah, they're already going to add to zero, so I don't need to add any extras. C-A-O. Done with that one. All right, let's now start looking at those polyatomics. So, if I have lead nitrate, lead is Pb2+. I know, it doesn't make sense. It actually comes from the old Latin word for lead. The old Latin word for lead was, um, it's going to sound silly, plumblum. Plumblum was the old word for lead. Do you know what the ancient Greeks used to make? Prince of Romans, can't remember. Do you remember what they used to make their pipes out of? 
Lead. Lead, because lead is a very soft metal. So the ancient Greeks used to use lead, and they used that to make their pipes. So plum blum was what it was called, and thus where the word plumber comes from. Ancient Greek. Um, however, bad news is that lead is really toxic, and the lead ions uh, leached into the water, and then people went crazy because lead is not good for you. All right, nitrate, NO three minus. How many nitrates do I need? One, two, none. Two. Because you see how I have positive two, negative one. All right. Now, something to keep in mind when you have polyatomics. If you write this like that, because you're like, I need two nitrates. That is actually saying you have 32 oxygen, not two nitrates. So when we're dealing with polyatomics, if we have multiple of them, we need to put them into brackets. Give them a nice little hug. Okay? Nice little hug. All right. I'll give you one more, and hopefully with the range of, that I've given you, you'll be ready to go. All right, the last example that I had for you guys was sodium carbonate. So sodium we've done before. What was that? N A plus. Carbonate? C. C? Oh, because <laughs> it's, it's oxygen and carbon. There's a three there, and there's two of them. So what do I need? Two seems to be the common number that I'm using today. Two sodiums. So then I would write Na2CO3. I don't need to put the carbonate into brackets because there's only one of them. So that can be left alone. And those are five different examples, and I'm hoping with those five different examples, it'll help give you guys a good foundation to understanding ionic compounds. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the main way to kind of learn how to do this is to practice it. So that way you see different variations of it. Ooh, I actually, I should probably do one more. It just occurred to me. What should you do if I have something like this? Um, let me make sure I can spell aluminium right first off. All right. Let's say we have this aluminium. There's only one L in aluminium. Oxide. So I have Al with a 3 plus, and I have O2 minus. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Oh no. When I add them together, it's going to be negative one, right? Should I add another oxygen? If I add another oxygen, I have negative four plus positive three. So I now have negative one. Now we got to add some more aluminium to it. The thing you need to look for in this example then are common numbers. So the co the um, the common multiple. And the common multiple between these two is six. So if I have two aluminiums, I have positive six. If I have three oxides, I have negative six. And those would add up together to be zero. So this one would be Al2O3. That's the trickiest that I'll probably get. I know you guys are tired. I'm done. That's all the notes for today. All right. That's it. All right. I'll have this piece of paper. I'll scan it to put it on Google Classroom. If anyone needs to borrow it, because I know you guys came in late, you can. I'll bring it over. Um, oh, wait for a second. So copying it down? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is we're taking the ionic compound as a name and we're translating it into the symbolic. So the thing we have to remember about chemistry is that we communicate both in words and in symbols. 
symbols are really useful for us because we can uh, get information about ratios and balancing equations and things like that. Really important skill set to learn because if you take level two chemistry, you're going to have to do a lot of equations. Uh, this equation stuff? Probably not. Yeah. All right, moving on.